Hello and welcome to the sixth and final Ulster GA webinar on technical proficiency in association with O'Neill's. The topic tonight is the crouch lift and blocking and is presented by Tony Scullion. This webinar is being recorded and will be accessible shortly on the Ulster GA YouTube page. The chat box is available for any questions or comments you may have during the presentation. Thank you, Ashin. Um, coaches, you're all very welcome. As Ashin says, this is our, our last one in this batch of webinars. Um, uh, where we, we are intending to put another number of webinars and we're going to be delivering them starting the 31st of March. Um, there'll be more details up on the OCJ website, Facebook and Twitter in the next few days and the first thing is going to be to do with preparing for the for the condensed condensed season which is very important um, uh, this year the way things are so it'll be I'm sure you'll be glad here it'll be a, a group of different presenters that will be delivering those next nine webinars and as I said to you they start the first one is on the 31st of March so this is our last one, crouch lift and blocking in this set of the skills program that we've delivered, coaches. So um, as you see there, the other five has been delivered. You can you can get them on the OCJ YouTube and they're all there. And this one here, as Ashin said, it will be up in a few days too. Uh, they'll be all be together in the OCJ YouTube. So uh, we'll get going here, coaches. And uh, tonight it's a crouch lift and blocking. We're going to be focusing on, uh, you know, breaking down the skills and um, spotting best practice and fixing and delivering the whole skill. And maybe if you look at the player up in the top right, uh, you know, as we go through the night here, coaches will be, as I say, will be focusing on both the crouch and and the block. And uh, as I say, that player up in the top right. The way he's bent over the ball, the knees are bent, the toes going underneath the ball, and look at the hands. The hands are in front of the ball to receive the ball. So we'll be touching on that uh, as we go through the night on both skills, because if you don't execute the skill properly, then you'll not it'll not come out it'll not it'll, you'll not finish finish up with the with the way you'd want to be taking the ball up into the hands. You'll be missing the pickup or the block. So Again, I'm going to be throwing up a few of these slides, coaches. You you would have seen these uh, slides in the first in the first few webinars we delivered, so I'm not going to dwell too too much on it. But um, where does it start at? It starts in the fundamentals, and I'm sure you all you tell the fundamentals. And when you look when you look at that, um, uh, we uh, photograph over on your right hand side, and you see we boys and girls are going through ladders, they're going round, they're going over wee hurdles, they're they're bouncing the ball at their hip right hand, bouncing the ball onto the left hand. That's we fundamental skills, we fundamental games are doing there. And that is so important. If you want to, to build the skills and the skills of Gaelic games, you need this foundation. That's the foundation that all young ones need because if you've got cross here, if they don't have the ABCs, the agility, balance and coordination, if they don't have the running, jumping and throwing, as they're called, the RJTs, and then of course the catching, passing, kicking and striking, uh, the CPKS of Gillick Games. So that's the, what the fundamentals is all about, and that's what kids get in that age group. Where does the fundamental start at? The fundamental start from the, the, the child trying to walk, or uh, you know, you know, the, the, the experts are say three years age to seven or eight. You know, some kids will develop quicker, some kids will take a wee bit longer um, to develop. So. You know, there's no certain point that they'll have developed that, that the, the fundamentals. It's all about, as I say, different youngs to look at, develop at a different time. But it's very important that they get these, this stuff at this at the young age level. They need them because, as I said, as it says down at the bottom of the page here, the fundamental movement skills are the foundation for sports specific skills, and that definitely is true. Um, so we'll just slip on here, skill development and coaching. Um, you know, the sports skills are best taught when the, when the, when the coach knows the observable components of the skill. Um, you know, the coach needs to know 
the components they're looking out for when they're spotting and fixing and giving good feedback instructs how to modify the bits that needs correction and again don't be teaching two or three or four skills at the one time teach one component with the more difficult skills at the time um, so again coaches different coaches have different methods how they do their session you, again you might have heard me talk before about the whole part whole versus the part whole part what i mean by that is some coaches now are starting off the game at the start when the when the players arrive at the session and then they look at it and what's going wrong in the game then so they put it into they break it down in the part situation and do activities and drills to fix it and then, then they finish off the game or the part whole part which is um, activities and drills to start then game and then uh drills and activities to finish um, and as i say that the old method was was drills and drills and drills for maybe 50 minutes of a session if you're going to do an hour session and only have 10 minutes of the game i would argue against that coaches i think the more we games small sided condition full sided games uh the, the children or players get the better so they learn better through the games, uh, making their own decisions, improving their decision making. Yes, there's a need, there's a time and a place for the part, for the activities, for the drills. Absolutely, I would do not, I would not disagree with that, coaches. But don't forget about the games, games, games. And as I say, all players like games, and uh, they'll be having fun. And fun and enjoyment is important, especially at that young age. In fact, at all age levels. Uh, no matter what level you play at, you need to be enjoying yourselves. Um, so players pass through various stages in learning the skills, and um, time time taken to master skills will vary depending on the individual's ability. As I touched as I touched on earlier, coaches, you know some kids are more advanced at five and six and seven years of age than other kids, but the other kids will will definitely get there too. There's no doubt about it, and you know. You know the, the quality of the coach will bring them on if the, if the coach is spotting and fixing and doing the right things and, and and coaching properly then the kids will come on the kids the kid will come on better and of course individual practice the more time the kid spends at home practicing in the garden or whatever the case to be the skills of daily games then of course the quicker they'll master the skills so practice 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 left right left right right left both sides is so important and you'll be doing that in your training sessions also of course whenever the master the stronger side get them onto the weaker side as quick as possible the idea model co coaches again it's a uh, Think about the word idea when you're coaching. Introduce the skill A for introduce. Uh, the coach will introduce the skill D for demonstrate the skill. And I, I say here now, does the coaches need to be great players to be able to coach, or are coaches should coaches be able to execute uh, to demonstrate the skill? Not necessary. Well, you know, get one of your better players if you're if you don't feel comfortable at demonstrating the skill. Well, get one of your better players to demonstrate it. As long as you're able to know the observable moments of coaching, as long as you know the skill and you know what you're looking for when you're spotting and fixing, you don't have to be the greatest person at demonstrating the skill. Execute, again, it can be the coach or the player, and then, of course, attend. You know, give positive feedback on areas that players can uh, fix, uh, get better at, and show them how, to, how, how they can fix their weak problem if they're not able to, if they're not actually executing the skill properly. So right, we're going to move on to the skills tonight, coaches. And I'd like to think we'll we'll will not it'll not be a wide long session. I'm going to get through this as quick as possible. So we'll look at the crouch left, and he here's the crouch left in the real game. So watch this.
out here towards Chris Conway. Hart trying to close him down. In towards Shoney Johnston. Bending his back and taking it as Martin Cole. The little team, when in form, worth coming to see any time. The crouch lift is a basic skill in Gaelic football used to lift the ball from the ground into the hands. Oof, that will be him slipping. Chased by Shorty. Impressively away from goal. Ger Brady coming up. I fear Got a hand here towards Matthew Clancy. Bit of work for him to do. A lot of movement required on their part. It's Michael Conroy playing again just his third championship match. Yeah. by Ger Heenahan. Chance for Blake to go back to recover. David Brady does well initially. Workfield players were taking the ball on too many steps. Kevin O'Neill is the one. Joe Higgins trying to get it from him. Kept alive there by the agility of Benny Coulter. So good in the air. George Conroy. Doing enough on it there. Back towards McDonald. Three leash players around him. Okay, uh, coaches. Uh, we'll just move on. There is a coaching point of the crouch club. As Ashin said in his introduction, coaches, don't be afraid to put in questions into the wee chat box. And hopefully during the session or maybe at the end of the session, there's, there's been a few questions to come in whenever you're registering for this session tonight. But if there's anything that that's what you want answered, put put it into the, the chat box, and uh, Ashin will 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 pass it on to me here, hopefully, and um, I will answer it at some stage of the session if there's something. So don't be uh, during the session here. I'm going to be asking you to interact a wee bit too, because a few wee things for interaction. So I want I want good interaction from the group of on the night coaches. Don't, there's no wrong answer. To, 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 to coaching, so everybody's entitled to their opinion. So we're going to go on to the coaching points of the crouch love coaches. So we'll play this. Here we see the crouch lift being performed by an elite player. Note the position of the head, hands and feet. Now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the crouch lift technique. Move to the ball. Bend the back and knees, placing the supporting foot alongside and a little ahead of the ball. Place the hands in front of the ball in a cupped position with the fingers spread. Bring the lifting leg forward, scooping the ball forward into the cupped hands. Draw the ball into the body to secure possession. Okay, coaches, can I say something before we move on? You know, the, the speaker, the commentator talked there about putting a, the foot alongside the ball. Yes, alongside the ball, but it doesn't have to be tight against the ball. It can be out from the from the ball. That, that supporting foot can be out from the ball, but it doesn't have to be tight against the ball. And remember, the hands, sometimes there, remember the hands have to be in front of the ball to receive the ball. When the toe goes underneath, if you don't have the hands in front of the, the ball, then the ball will will go on the ground in front of you. You need to have the hands, fingers down, touching the grass in front of the ball for, for the ball to go into your hands. So we'll just move on here and we'll watch the common errors. The errors that uh, not alone will young players make. I can see times at senior matches that they don't do the, do, don't do the proper uh, pick up because the, they're, they're doing something wrong. They're not doing it the correct way. So here's common errors for the for the crouch left not placing the hands in front of the ball or leaving too much of a gap between the hands is another common error when performing the crouch lift technique this may result in the ball slipping through the player's hands and failing to secure possession to correct this error ensure that the player places the hands in front of the ball in a cupped position with the fingers spread Touching the ball on the ground is another common error when performing the crouch lift technique. This may result in a free being awarded against the player. 
to correct this error, ensure that the player brings the lifting leg forward to scoop the ball into the cupped hands. Not planting the support foot beside the ball is another common error when performing the crouch lift. This may leave the player off balance and stumbling over or result in the ball being kicked ahead instead of lifted into the hands. To correct this error, judge the stride length as you approach the ball and plant the support foot to the side of the ball as the lifting foot comes through to scoop the ball into the hands. Okay, coaches, um, before we move on here, um, I am aware there's coaches on tonight who, who takes um, ladies' teams. So that's the one difference that between um, males and females. Um, the girls are allowed to pick the ball off the ground um, as long as they're on their feet. So they don't have to put their toe under either. And I'm going to touch on that, coaches, as we go along the night here, just briefly. Uh, so, um, Here's a crouch lift. Now, this is your first opportunity. Could you please text them to the chat box here and tell me what is these two lads? Spot them. What are they doing wrong? Why are they not able to do the crouch lift correctly? I want you to tell me why Fergal and John is missing the ball here and they're not getting up. These lads are on the 14 lads from my own club here. So, um, um, so I just want you to to have a look at these lads here and let me know uh, what they're doing wrong. So I'll play the clap. Please, will you t uh, text them to the chat box, please. Let's put on a few answers here until uh, we get the thing going here, okay? What do you think they're doing wrong? Put the answers into the box, coaches. What are they doing wrong? What spot and fix? Why are they not able to execute the crutch lift? In fact, these lads now are on the 15. I said they're on, they're on the 14 last year. They're on the 15. What are they doing wrong? Any, 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 uh, any answers coming on? Spot and fix. Come on, coaches. There's no answers wrong. Okay, I'll give it another 20 seconds. Nobody has any answers on yet. Not, yes, there's one here not bending over the ball. Brilliant. Absolutely. Not bending over the ball. The hand position. Absolutely brilliant. The hand position is wrong. The hands are at the side of the ball. Absolutely. That's why the ball's not coming to the hand. Any more coaches? As I say, not bending over the ball. Great answer, hand position. There's another one there, coaches. Come on, come on. Let's see anybody else come in there. Any more answers before I move on? Why are they not able to bend over the ball? What's wrong? Why are they not able to bend over the ball, coaches? Tell me why they're not able to bend over the ball for. Hand position and judging distance to the ball. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and judging distance to the ball. What that coach means is the foot is not up alongside the ball. That the, the planted the foot, the plant the planted foot is too far back from the ball. It's not up alongside the ball. So when they go to pick it up, they lose balance and they can't get the ball up. Absolutely great answer. Great answer. Um what else? Hands not in front, brilliant, absolutely. Straight legs, absolutely. Knees are not bent. Foot not beside the ball, perfect. Foot not up alongside the ball, perfect. Absolutely perfect, coaches. Thank you so much. That is absolutely brilliant. Right, we're just going to move on here. Now, coaches, I'm going to show you a few wee basic crouch lift activities because when you, what you watched in the demonstration to start from the star player doing the crouch lift, the ball was sitting still, sitting dead still. When is the football ever sitting still in a game of Gaelic football? Never. The ball is either rolling towards you or it's rolling away from you. Most of the time, it's never, never hardly sitting still. So that's a different, harder ball to pick up 
A ball is rolling towards you and, a, and then a ball is rolling away from you. It's even harder. So by practicing the static ball, the ball is sitting still, that's all right for youngsters to really start coaches. But then you have to move them on to the, the way you come to success here. Because, as I say, the ball is never sitting still in a game of Gaelic football. And a ball sitting still is a lot easier to pick up than any of these uh, variations here. So just watch this here to the left. It's happening here. The two lads are just standing a few metres from each other, rolling the ball to each other, getting over the ball, getting the hands down and picking up the ball. That's a different skill completely than picking up a, a ball sitting still. They have to get over the ball. Again, get the toe underneath it, harder to execute because when the ball is rolling towards you. A lot of players, you'll see senior players, they'll touch the ball on the ground in that instance, free against them. They have to get the toe underneath the ball before they can touch the ball with the hand. So that's the first stage. Then we'll just stop at that, coaches, and we'll move on to the second stage, the middle one. This time they're rolling, going out, picking it up, going around a cone, going back, rolling it, attack the ball, pick it up, Go around the cone and roll again for your partner. Again, attack the ball. This time, they're running into the ball, which is even harder again. That's a different stage. It's a harder stage to do. So, again, look at it. Roll, attack the ball, pick it up, and then roll it for the partner. So, that's another the next stage to the crouch left. So, and we'll, we'll hold it at that, coaches. And the last one, here it is. The two lads, the ball each. And they roll the ball away from each other, away from them, and they're going after to pick it up. Then that's possibly the hardest one to do. The ball is rolling away from you. So just a ball each, and just roll the ball out, and they're going after it and pick it up. A, roll, a ball is rolling away from you. So there's a few stages of the crouch left coaches. As I say, never do you ever see a ball sitting still in a game of Gaelic football. So it's okay to practice at the very start. Yes, that's the one you'd start with. But it's not the one you'll continue with. Uh, whenever they, they put a master still ball to pick it up, then you go on to those, the one that's rolling towards them and the one that's rolling away. And again, I'm very much aware for girls, they can pick the ball off the ground. So, okay, so we'll hold it that and we'll move on. We see coaches. Right, this is the, the girls pick up. I'm just going to briefly touch on this. And this is one of the questions that came in whenever Jens was registered, so I'll maybe touch on it. But I'm going to show, show you here tonight the two-handed pick-up for the girls. So on the left-hand side, watch the two lads. They're getting over the ball, bending down, picking it up. They don't have to put their toe underneath it. Again, look at the coaching points. One foot up alongside the ball, one hand to the front of the ball, one hand to the back of the ball down and pick it up, pull onto the chest. They have to get over the ball, knees bent, get right down and pick the ball to the ground, two hands. Now, I'm very much aware, and that was one of the questions that came in, um, what you do, when you practice a two-handed or a one-handed, there's a one-handed pick up in ladies football too. Well, if it's a nice wee tougher grass on the field and all that, and the girls are able to execute the two hands, there's no harm practicing the one-handed pickup because you can get away quicker with the one-handed uh, pickup. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm not going to demonstrate it here, but it's as you know, it's one hand underneath the ball, just going down with one hand, fingers, and and with the palm of the hand facing upwards and taking the ball up as you as you're moving as you're moving towards the ball. But as I say, I'm just showing you the two-handed pickup tonight. But there's no harm practicing the one-handed one, but as I say, in wet conditions and maybe mucky pitches, the two-handed pickup will be the best of the gears. So again, I'm going to move to the, to, to the wee video to the right-hand side and tell me now what these two lads are doing wrong for the gears pickup. And again, please, coaches, text them to the, the chat box and we'll see your answers. Okay, and we'll play here. Right, tell me what they're doing wrong. Spot and fix. Spot and fix, coaches. Come on, coach, coaches, let's text them. What's 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 the boys doing wrong for the pickup? Now this is for ladies. What are they doing wrong? Let me see your answers.
Straight, le straight legs, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Straight legs. Knees are not bent. Absolutely. Eh? They're stopping to pick up the ball. Absolutely. They're stopping. They should be moving. They don't have to stop. Great answers. Anything else, coaches? Straight legs, stop, stopping to pick up the ball. Great answers. What else? Are there a couple more? Uh, great. Not moving with the ball. Straight legs. Absolutely. Brilliant. Stopping before picking ball up. Both feet. A great one. Stopping before pick up. Both feet behind the ball. Absolutely. Where's the foot up? There's no foot. There should be one foot up well up in front and one foot behind to get down there to, to the center of the ball to get it up. So the, the two feet behind the ball, which is incorrect. Uh, stopping instead of picking up on the move. Absolutely static when picking up the ball. Great answers, coaches. That's it. They're not, they're not moving. They're standing. Great answers. Absolutely right. And as somebody said there, knees, the legs are straight. The knees are not bent. Brilliant. That's how you spot and fix coaches. And that's what you'll find come your training sessions with your young players. That there'll be some of them not just doing it correctly. And that's up to you to spot it and fix it. How do you do that? Without embarrassing the child or the player. And you don't want to be taking out the same player from the group. The more coaches you have, the better. Especially at the age level. The more coaches you have. And as I say, somebody, somebody can have a weak white ward. Show them, do it for them or whatever. And just without pulling them out of the group Every five minutes, as I say, just nice and quietly going and spotting it. That was brilliant, coaches. Well done. Right, we'll move on. There's a crouch left coaching card. And as I said to you, coaches, you'll you'll get this all up on OCJ YouTube in a few days' time. This will be up. This this webinar will be up with the other five was delivered on the skills. So um, now we're going to go on to the chip left, and just, we'll watch it in a real game here, which is. A very important skill, and it's one that's not coached. We don't coach enough for the chip left. Uh, uh, should we be spending a heap of time on it? No, I'm not saying you spend a lot of time, but it's, it's something that it's a skill that should be touched on. And that was another question that came in whenever you were interested for the for the co course tonight was: uh, Do we should we be coaching the chip left? Chip left, um, and I feel we should be. As I say, without spending too much time because you only have your wee grip once or twice a week. But it's something that you even could show to them and they could be practiced at home. You could get them to practice at home too. But it's, yes, there's time for just watch it here. Fair play to Shawnee McDermott. Full credit to them. They've shown character. They still have time. The chip lift is used to gather possession on the run without breaking stride. It is particularly effective in wet weather. Players also use the assisted lift to speed up the attack, flicking the ball into the arms of an on-running teammate. Good support play. Worked here by Paul Bannon. Taking it up here, Peter O'Leary trying to get in a tackle. There's not much between them. You'd nearly be putting your money on the men in orange and white. They've got a job to do to get back the lead here. It's about keeping it in play. Making a decent bit of headway here. It's Howie once again. The referee has blown his whistle. Okay, that's the chip left. And now we're going to look at the coaching points, coaches. Um, uh, before, in case you forget, uh, the commentator said there, you know, maybe is maybe used more in wet weather. Uh, I, I, it can be used in any weather, and it can be done in any weather. It can be, it can be done on a dry pitch as much as a wet pitch, you know. And uh, you know, so we'll just watch it here, coaches. Here we see an elite player performing the chip lift. Note the position of the head, hands and feet. Now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the chip lift. Approach the ball at pace. Keep the back straight. Head down, eyes on the ball. Striding into the ball, wedge the toes underneath the ball to chip it upwards. When the toes are wedged under the ball, it will rise sharply. 
extend both hands downwards to receive the ball and secure it into the chest. The assisted chip lift is a variation on the technique that is used to play the ball to an oncoming teammate. As the ball approaches, chip it for the oncoming player to receive at chest height. Okay, coaches, and before I move on uh, to show you these wee clips here, um, the commentator said that you have to, you, you move at speed. Not necessary. You don't have to go at speed this. You'll see these two lads doing now. They're just jogging into the ball and they're doing the chip left. So you, you don't have to be going at speed, no. Uh, but you have to the proper technique. So I just want you to look at the, the left hand here, side here, the two lads doing the chip left. And they're just they're just walking onto the ball, jogging onto the ball. And we'll play that again. Okay, now we'll go to the right hand side, coaches. Spot and fix. These two lads are like the, the, the other the last video was here when I was asking you spot and fetch. We are just deliberately doing wee things uh, not right here to see can we spot and fix. So just tell me what these two lads are doing wrong. They're not, they're not able to do the chip left properly. And again, coaches, could you please, please text them. The interaction so far of the session has been brilliant. So, uh, and, I, and I like that, to be honest. I want to see you coaches involved because then being involved in the session, you'll get, you'll get a lot more out of it. So just watch these two lads. Um, I have asked them to luckily do mistakes here. So see, can you can you can you spot them? This is for the chip left too. Let's text them to the text them text them to the chat box and tell me what they're doing wrong. What are they doing wrong there that they weren't doing that they were they were doing correct on the left hand side? Go ahead, coach. I want to see your text. What? Now this is a tricky. This is a tricky one. There's no wrong answers here, coaches. But this is a lot trickier. What are they doing wrong? This is a lot trickier. What are they doing wrong? Right, coaches. Let's get a few answers on, please. There's no answer wrong. Outside the foot, yes, absolutely. They're not doing the right set part of the foot. Sometimes they're going with the side of the foot instead of their toe. What else are they doing? Not bending down for the ball. Uh, yes, they're not. They're not bending down to receive the ball. Absolutely, absolutely. What else? They're not receiving. The, they're having the hands out to receive the ball. Uh, not getting foot on the ball. Yes, absolutely. They're not getting the foot on the ball properly. Uh, and what else? What the, uh, not a couple of coaches or anything else? Uh, them brilliant dancers. Anything else? And when they're getting the foot underneath the ball, what are they doing wrong? Foot not getting underneath the ball. Absolutely. What else? Uh, there's something else. When, when they are getting the foot underneath the ball, what's going wrong? As well as not getting the hands out to receive the ball, the ball's still not raising for them. It's going too far in front. Why, why are they not? Why is the ball not coming up properly to them for? Not running with pace. Yes, that's maybe one reason. But they're able to. Uh, good answer. Great answer. But they're able to do it in the first video on the left hand side, and they weren't really. They weren't going really hard either. But yes, that could be. Not getting fit in underneath it enough. Correct. Absolutely, not getting on the ball 
Back foot is too far away. The back foot, yes, maybe stages the back foot's too far away. So they're not getting absolutely. But I would say too, also, they're pushing the ball, coaches. They're not giving it that wee quick snap. It has to be a very wee quick snap underneath the ball with the toe for the ball to rise. And if you watch the lads, they're pushing the ball times there. They're just pushing it. They're just jabbing it. They're not. They're, just, they're not giving it the right wee quick. See that? See that? That is a more push. They're more pushing the ball. Uh, they're not giving it the right wee snap underneath the ball. Chipping forward. Yes, they're chipping the ball maybe more forward than upwards. So they're not getting the toe underneath the ball properly. And they're not. If you look at the left hand side again, coaches. And I'll put the two on the one time for you here. Look, you look at the left hand side. Do you see what I mean? They're not giving that me quick snap. And the left hand side, they were giving it that me quick snap underneath the ball with the toe. And it was coming up very easy for them. But they're more or less pushing the ball. They're more or less pushing their foot underneath the ball instead of uh, instead of uh, giving it that me quick snap. Brilliant answers. I uh, there's an answer there. They're kicking it forward instead of scooping it up. Absolutely. So they're kicking it. They're not getting underneath with the toe. And they're kicked at more cells forward. If you get underneath the ball, the ball, ball will rise, and it's a wee quick reaction. That's a wee quick snap with the toe. Very sharp snap to get the ball to rise. Brilliant, coaches. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, we'll just move on. We're going on now to the block. And, uh, you know, this is a skill, a great, it's a skill I love too. It's a, it's a, it's a great skill, and it's, it's, it's not as hard as what people think is to execute. So we'll watch the block here in the real game scenario. Now, Mollick, a great block there. well, that time defending well. Yeah, great block. Good. Plays it into the corner here. Oh, deadly accurate. Here it is. Fantastic block. A block down is a tackling skill used to prevent an opponent shooting for a score or passing to another player. In scoring situations, the block down is an effective and dramatic defensive skill. Very quickly in towards Pina MacDonald, making an angle well blocked down by Keith Higgins, comes back with the white boots to try and level it in stoppage time. High, driving in, moving, travelling, hits the crossbar! Out to start is Jason Sherlock, will he pop it over? Great block down! Keith Higgins drops it, Alan Brogan's pouncing. Awkward angle, great block by Higgins. About 10 years ago against Kerry. Back once again here. Alan Dillon, great block. Shane Mulligan. Trevor Smollett. Jeremy Brady. That's an error. Again, that big reach of Donaghy sets it off to Russell. Goal chance, Cooper. There's the block. It is a super block, really. Paul McDonald throws it. Nice move by O'Connor. Lays it off to Russell. Cork move by far in this game, coming after just 53 minutes of play. Yes, sweet hands that time from Donald O'Connor, fed it to Kevin O'Sullivan, but that's textbook tactic from Behold McCarthy. Just look at the way he came down on the boot. It breaks this time, kindly for Tony Mark. It's his opportunity. Oh, what a chance of a goal! And it felt just watch it again here. Watch Connor Gormley. This is McDonald, and there was a block. Brilliantly affected. It saved Tyrone. It may mean the cup. Okay, coaches, some great blocks there. Uh, what? Now we'll go through the coaching points of the block. Here we see the block down being performed by an elite player. Note the position of the head, hands, and feet. Now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the block down. Stand close to the opponent in the check position. As the opponent prepares to play the ball, reach forward with the arms outstretched and hands close together. Keep your eyes on the ball. Block the ball at the point of contact with the boot. Move to regain possession ahead of the opponent.
Okay, coaches, and common errors for the blocking. Shying away from contact is a common error when learning the block down technique. To correct this error, introduce the player to the contact situation in a slow and controlled manner. Missing the ball as it passes between the outstretched arms is a common error when performing the block down technique. To correct this error, Keep the hands close together, moving confidently to block the ball at the point of contact with the ball. Closing the eyes when attempting to perform the block down is another common error. This may result in the player missing the block as they fail to react to the direction of the kick. To correct this error, ensure that the player keeps their eyes open, focusing on the ball at the point of contact. Okay, coaches. Ah, uh, we see now. Hold on. Okay. Right. I'm going to. There was a lot of number of questions whenever you registered. And remember again, text any deep questions you want to answer. I'll be finished here now, maybe in less than 10 minutes. So, any other week queries or questions you want to put to me, just put it into the chat box and Ashin will get it through to me. Um, so there was a number of questions came on to me about um, about the block and uh, how do you coach it? And, you know, you know, children are fear to put the hands down in case they get hurt and all that. And how can you take the fear uh, from children uh, when they're when they're when you're practicing the block to, to start? So uh, I'm going to give you going to show you five wee activities. Where where the blocking starts at starts at and it starts with a softball. If you look at number if you look at number one here, coaches, you see both lads Fergal and John are on their knees, and and Fergal has the ball in his hand and he's he's not even throwing the ball up. He's just coming up. You'll I'll just, I'll play it for you here and then you'll see what I mean. Fergal is just. Ball coming up from he's taking it down, he's just putting the ball up, not throwing it up, just using his arms to put the ball up like that. John's putting out the hands, big hands. You see John's big hands, eyes in the ball. And you know, the commentator right through this, the, all these wee videos has been talking about the head, hands, feet. Though the, they're the three key areas to think about when you're coaching. John's eyes are firmly focused on the ball, and Fergal is just coming forward with the ball in his hands. And John's put the hands out to block. That's what starts that. And you do it with very soft balls. It doesn't have to be a a real gillick ball to start. It can be a very, very soft ball, but that there will not hurt anybody. And that's where it starts at. Number one, no, number it can start there. No, number one. Then when you go on to number two here, I'll play number two here, coaches. Uh, this time um, John is on his knees with the balls and Fergal is stamping. Now you can lead either with, and I'll just make this point here in case, and you'll see both the lads will do this. You can you can lead either with your right leg or you can lead with the left. There's no there's no set way of saying you have to come on your right foot. Or it can be your left or whatever. So we'll just watch we'll just watch the two lads here. This time John's gently throwing the ball gently. And Fergal's coming in with big hands, side by side, fingers spread. The more bigger that you can make your two hands, the bigger target, the best chance of making the block. There's no space between the hands there at all. And, and big fingers, as I say, fingers spread. So just gently, like that, John's gently throwing the ball up and Fergal's just blocking. And remember I said you can lead with the right or lead with the left foot, whatever. So that's number two. And then we'll go on to number three. And this time, Fergal, the player on the ball now, is starting. We'll just play it and then I'll talk you through it. He's doing a wee toe tap. And the, and the blocker now, this time, is on his knees. Blocking. But it's only a wee gentle toe tap. The, the, 
person is doing on the ball. So it's giving the blocker more confidence again. So remember what started that number one, number two, now number three. And now the player will start to build confidence that this is easy. This skill is easy. This block can be done very easy. It will not hurt you. You keep your eyes to the ball, big hands. Uh, you'll, never, you'll not get hurt. Block close to the foot. The, the closer you can get down to the foot, the better chance of making the block. The further your hands away from the foot, the less chance of making the block. So that's number three. Now we'll go on to number four. And we'll watch number four. Now both of the lads are standing, and it's a wee toe tap still. And the other player, Fergal, as you see this time, is leading with the left foot. So there's no difference. You can lead with the left or right. So again, it's just a wee toe tap, gentle toe tap, and giving the player a chance to block. Okay, is everybody happy with that? It's just as simple as that, coaches. And give we activities like that there for your young players. Get them, give them confidence. It's not going to hurt their hands. It's it's an easy skill when you can when you are doing the when you are coaching the key coaching points and they do it properly. They'll have no fear of it. And then number five, both players are standing, but this time the player, as John, I think, is stepping, taking a step on the block. He's taking one step on the block, and you'll notice changing. He led with the left nose. He's leading the left this time, he led with the right the first time. So he can lead with either foot, doesn't matter. And he's just stepping on the block. And this time Fergus kicking the ball gently. And he's, he's stepping on. He's just taking one step on. So that's five stages of the block. There are the stages of the block coaches. And that's the type of stuff. And as I say, you can do it with soft balls. Soft balls to start with them. So there's the five stages. Anybody, any questions? About that, don't be afraid to text them. Um, okay, is everybody happy with that? And as I say, any questions, come 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 back to me here. And then we'll we'll now <coughs> the two lads, this is them was five early stages, and this is what leads to here. This is what it leads to to the real block. I don't know how far, far to come up with the ball that time. I don't think he even touched the ball on the ground. I'm just, as a repeat reel, it's, I'm continuous playing this one clip here. He's in the ball, gets down, blocks the ball, turns, and he comes up with the ball. I don't think he even touched it on the ground, but a great block. <coughs> Coming in, timer's wrong, making the make conviction of getting down low on the foot and making the block. And this time we'll watch John doing it. Again, brilliant block. Dave and block came in. Eyes, look at the eyes, look at the head, eyes in the ball, never going to miss that block. That's a perfect executed block. So that's what the two lads, as you see. Any questions? Come on. So it's not a difficult skill. And it's not a skill, it's not something that you get hurt at. As long as you don't put them into doing something they're not able to do to start. Remember the last five slides that I've done there in the previous, where it starts at, nice and gently in the knees, just not even throwing the ball to start, then throwing. Okay, and that leads to that there. Okay, coaches. And there's the, the coaching card, the block coaching card. We're doing well here, we're nearly read up. And there's your coaching card. And as I said, you'll see, you'll get this presentation on the YouTube, also GA YouTube website in a few days' time. Now, now, another wee bit of interaction here, a wee bit of questions, Coach, and there's no answers wrong again. So, so, somebody's asked me to replay, to replay the first video. Uh, we see now, and I will do that if I can. And I'm just wondering, I'm wondering, is it this video you're talking about? Uh, somebody's texting to ask me to replay the I wonder, is it this one here? I think Tony, it was the one on the next one of the two boys. I think. Oh, very good, very good. Very good. People, but... Okay, very good. Thank you, Yoshin. Uh, right, this one here. Is there anybody any comments to make? He had his eyes in the ball, and he made the block, and he turned. 
And I'll play the second one too, two at the one per time. If anybody wants to make a comment there, no problem. Okay, so we'll thank you, Archie, there, and we'll just move on. The, the, the coaching card for the block, and now a wee bit of spot on fixing for you coaches, and we're nearly finished up. We're nearly finished up. I'm going to throw up four four photographs, and you see them numbered at the corners here. One, two, three, and four. I don't have anything up yet, coaches, so with number one photograph, number two photograph, number three, that's it. I'm doing these clockwise, and number four. Now, I want to ask you, which one one, two, three, or four. Now you have to, you have to read the whole, read out the whole picture here. Is the ball has the ball been kicked, or is the ball only gone down onto the foot? I want you to text down and let me know which one you think is near enough perfection. The block is definitely going to be made. Which of the photographs would you say is as close to perfection as? You'll see and think about where the ball's at. Has the ball been kicked? Has it not been kicked? This is only a still photograph. Tell me which one you think is the best chance of making the block. Which one is the best chance of making the block? Give me, uh, put in your answers and ask you to put them through to me. One, two, three, or four, and then we'll discuss coaches. Put in your answers. Hey, no answers wrong. Don't be worried if you give me the wrong answer. I mean, no, don't worry with that. And don't worry, we all get them wrong. And I would get them wrong as much as you. So throw me in your answer there, coaches. One, two, three, or four. Which one do you think is the best attempt to make a block? And remember. You have to remember with the ball. Think about the ball. Has the ball been kicked? Has it not been kicked? Which one is going to make the block? Now, there's ones coming in here now. Number three. Number three. Three. Number one. Three. Three. Number four. Brilliant. Number three. Brilliant. The, the consensus here is number three has it. A lot of ones going for three. Yes, four, one. One has been named one number one a couple of times. Four, brilliant. I think we'll maybe give another 15 seconds, but three is the most popular one at the moment. And we'll give it another 10 seconds, coaches, and then we'll discuss. Brilliant. And thank you for your responses, coaches, because it makes the session easier for me to deliver to you whenever you're interacting with me. It's, it's very hard for me to look into a blank screen, as I say, uh, seeing these four photographs, not knowing who's out there, who's in the, who's in the webinar tonight. I don't see anything other than the, the four photographs in front of me tonight and whatever I'm putting up during the, the webinar here. As I say, I'm just talking into a screen. So it's good to get you to interact. Brilliant. Now we'll talk. Number one. Number one. Okay, number one, uh, it's the Kerry player, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's David Clifford here, but he, the ball has already left the foot. Do you agree with me on that there? The ball has left the foot. And the, the dairy player, the ball has left the foot, but the dairy player has come down to make a block. Now, his hands wasn't bad. His hands wasn't, was grand. But look at the head. A's closed. And when you think of it, the foot, the ball has left the foot. So the ball's there. So there's no way he's going to make the block. Uh, he's coming a wee bit too late and his eyes is closed. So the ball will be gone. So uh, that's what I would say about number one. You might disagree with me. Number two. Uh, the, the girl is ready to kick the ball. She's ready to kick the ball. The, the, the Galway is it. Ready to kick the ball. 
I said Galway, Westmeath, whatever, whichever county it is, they're ready to kick the ball and the Dublin players coming in and I'm right to say there's no way she's, she's back too far to block. Her hands is very much away, but her, she's, far, she's back too far. She's never going to make the block. That ball's going to be on the foot in another split second and <clears throat> this player is out too far to make the block. We'll go to number four. Down here in the bottom left. Number four, the player's kicking the ball here. Uh, the player's kicking the ball. The girl has the ball kicked. And the girl trying to block is looking away from the ball. She, is her, she wasn't looking down at the foot at all. But the ball's already away. So there's no chance of the girl making the block. But she wasn't looking at the foot. The eyes were open. But she was looking away from the foot. And as I say, the ball's away. She, so she, she came in too late. And she, she had in her eyes in the ball. Number three, whoever, number three to me, and uh, what that to me is as close to perfection as you'll get because the player has not kicked the ball. The ball he's only dropping the ball onto the foot. You see the, 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 the leg, the foot's just coming forward to kick that ball. So it's going to be another split second before that ball's kicked. The lad has done a full dive, the two feet off the ground. He's committed himself fully, which is um, he's, re he's, he's, he's read the play perfectly. He knows the player is committed to kick. He is committed to kick. The hands is out, but another split second further, them hands will be closing, and that would be a perfect block. And you're going to ask me, Tony, what are the days? Well, I can tell you the days is open because when I made that foot or larger, well, just, well, you think the eyes is open there. I think you see the eyes is open there anyway. But just watch this here, coaches. There, look at that. That's that foot or larger. Look at the eyes. Look at the, you know, everything. Everything about that. He, as I say, this fella hasn't not kicked the ball. By the time he's the ball, the foot is to the ball. This lad definitely will have the hands down to make a brilliant block. So I will be saying number three would be the one myself. So that was good, good crack coaches. So <clears throat> this here is a wee graph <coughs> of the Ulster Championship this year. Again, I'd like to thank Owen McNichol, a sports science officer for the Ulster GA. Owen would have put this together for me. It's not, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's no. It can be the difference of one and losing matches, but believe it or not, in this instance, <laughs> the team that had the most blocks won the Ulster Championship. But it's not, it's not going to be the, um, the one or all the time. But in tight matches, it can make a difference. But we look here at um, the first one here. Blue, I want to tell you, blue is, is Calvin. All the blue ones is Calvin. So against Monon, they made three blocks. Monon didn't make any blocks. Um, in this match here, Donegal is a green. Donegal made one block and Throne made one block. And they're also championship first round match. Derry against Armagh. Armagh made one block. There was no Derry blocks. From Mana here, from Mana is a light green. They made one block. Down made no blocks in that game. Uh, uh, again, Calvin and Antrim. Calvin two. <coughs> Antrim null. Armagh uh, and Donegal. Uh, Donegal made one block, block and Armagh made none. In the other semi final, Calvin made, uh, Down made four blocks and Calvin made two. And in the final, Calvin made four blocks and Donegal made one block. Um, now, that was, uh, that was in, in all the other championship matches this year. And when you count the average up, I know Calvin had four matches, but when you count up the average, Calvin had 11 block, blocks in total over the four matches, which is an average of three, nearly enough three blocks per game. And um, you know, Down, had, uh, Down had four blocks there and none laid, laid four blocks in two games, but Calvin had the best average. Um, so a block can, can be the difference of one and losing, absolutely. So it's just wanted to show you that big graph. So um, again, we're finishing off here, coaches. <coughs> The takeaway messages. Uh, uh, remember the importance of good uh, of being good at the skills of the game.
first touch, and that's all about practice. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. So, um, wonders or opportunity, fundamentals can be from three to eight. Doesn't have. I'm not saying, you know, I'm saying four to seven here. It could be boys and girls could be developed a wee bit later. It could be it could be to nine years age of fundamentals need to be before, and to learn to train stages after that is more maybe wee games and as I say into into game situations and. Yes, is you can have certain wee games and fun games and the fundamentals too, but this is more into the the, the, the skills and the wee games, of course. And I'll say it again, the fundamentals you're practicing different wee skills, but there's skills that children at four, five, six, and seven aren't able to execute. So they, you, you can do more movement skills. Remember what I talked about agility, balance, and coordinations, running, jumping, and throwing. A lot of that's in that fundamental stage. Simply the me simplify the message and let them play. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And what I mean by that, coaches, and you've heard me say this before, I know players who were the best players of all time playing Gaelic football. Um, I know a player who, who dropped the ball from the right hand to the left foot, or was it the other way, the left hand to the right foot. And and uh, in the coaching manual, it'll be, it'll be telling you if you're doing the two tap, it's right hand to right foot, left hand to left foot. But this player done it the opposite way. He came across the body and he was the best uh, wing half back maybe ever. But nobody nobody told him to change because he he had a fatal flaw. He was able to execute the skill. So there was no call. To, if, he had been, if it wasn't working out for him and he wasn't able to do the, the skill properly, then you'd have switched him to right hand, to right foot and so on. Error is a part of learning process. Just remember how many... How many, how many errors does a child make before they're able to walk? Just think about a baby. How many errors they make before they're able to walk? So that's all part of learning. So well, there will be errors. Don't worry about that. Knowledge is no substance for being caring. Creating a positive uh, and learning environment. And players and children and people may not remember what, what you said, but they will always remember how, how you made them feel. And that's a wide important. That's why it's important, coaches. Yeah, um, if you're that caring coach uh, and likable coach, and and uh, and the players have that total respect for you, and uh, then then you're a winner as a coach. You're definitely on a, on a winner as a coach um, because it's about how you make the players feel. That's in years to come, they'll remember you for that more so than maybe the knowledge as a coach you have. And uh, there's we links that they get we resources on uh, coaches. Uh, there's loads of stuff now in the internet, as you know, all the drills and activities and games you want. As I said to you, these webinars we're delivering, and, and I delivered a number in the first lockdown down to you way back in uh, April and May or June of, of last year, and you'll get them on the OCG website on fitness of the ball and and games to um, and prove different things. So there's a lot of stuff you can get on these websites and these links, coaches, that, that'll help you. But um and so that's questions, please. Are there any questions to finish? Um I'm just gonna check here. Are there any questions? Um uh, okay, see. I'm just looking at the questions here, coaches. Uh, that's a good question. Somebody has put in here, and that was one of the questions that came in. How can you play a game focusing the block? How would you get lots of blocks in the game? Great question because there was another person put the. I've answered most of the questions, I think, through the presentation. There was another one uh, during registration was how can you increase chances of a block in small sided games? Well, just putting a. Coaches, putting a wee condition on the game, on your wee small sided game. Put a weak condition on it. For example, uh, if you if you have two teams packed, you don't even have to you don't even have to play until main goals. So your weak condition game, say uh, as, as, again, it's according to many players you have. Um, um, just uh, game starts, and every time you make a successful, say, twenty meter kick pass or whatever the case may be, you will get a point. But it's between two teams, but the you, there's no there's no solo allowed, no two tap of bounce. So you have only four or five steps when you get the ball that you have to have a kick. So by having no solo on your weak condition game, 
the player that's marking that player that's on the ball knows that he or she's going to have to kick the ball in 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 three or four or five steps or whatever. And don't have any fist pass or hand pass. Just kicking. Just all a kicking game and no solo on the game and no hand passing. So the player has only got four or five steps to kick that ball on. Yes, a lot of the kicks will go astray. And it'll not go to their teammate. What odds is about it? You're not practicing, you're not practicing good kick pass, you're practicing blocking. So if they get a good kick pass into one of their teammates, give them a point. But if they make a block, if the opposition makes a block, give them a point. So a point for a block and a point for a, a kick pass that goes uh, 20 meters or 25 or 30 meters to a teammate, scoring to what age or group you're working with. But then with having no toe tap um, and having no fist or hand pass in the game, then it's, the ball's down on the foot and there's going to be a lot of kicks and there's going to be a lot of opportunities for the players to, to block the ball. That's the way game you get played. Hopefully you understand what I mean by that. No toe tap or bounce, as I say, and 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 the ball has to be moved um, after every uh, four or five steps. So again, as I say, it'll you'll get more chances to block the ball. Uh, um, how can you get lots of blocks? Well, that's, that's that's the question answered for you. That's how you can get lots of blocks in the game. Having a week, putting a week condition on it that they have to get whenever they get the ball, they kick it. Don't and, and see that new game there, coaches. Don't play it in a wide tight area because you want it on a spread out a bit too. You want it spread out a bit that um, um, that they, they can kick the ball uh, 20, 30, 40 meters just again according to what age level you're working with. Um, that will try to kick the ball that length. Are there any other questions here? Um, somebody says two hands or one. I might I may have mentioned that two hands or one for the pickup. Again, we didn't do the one pick up, one hand pick up tonight, but uh, again, it's according to conditions and all. And if they're able to master the two hands, then you can practice the one hand you want to, but don't do, don't be spending a heap of time on the one hand. No, you don't have to, you only have them once or twice a week. So it's maybe something that they can practice at home, but the two hands are. A pick up is more sure of getting the, of retaining the possession. Uh, well, a lot of the questions I said to you will be how you take the fear of a child when blocking the ball. I showed you the steps there. I showed you the steps where you start off for the child that, and then they'll get confidence, and then then they'll have no fear. Um, I think that's it, coaches. I think I've I've touched on everything. Just to finish off here, make sure there's no nothing else on here. No, that's it, um, coaches. Thank you very, very much for attending tonight. I uh, hope you got something out of the session. And as I said at the start, uh, when ten, the OCJ and Tens are on out and all the set of webinars starting on the 31st of March, if you watch the OCJ website, Facebook, Twitter, you'll you'll see more details over the next few days. And it's going to be our fourth session. It's going to be, as I said to you, it's going to be preparing for the condensed season, and uh, which is which will be very popular now with the situation it is at the moment um, it'll be a tight season this year it'll be very condensed so it'll be there'll be a few a number of good webinars coming up coaches and there'll be different presenters so hopefully you'll enjoy and um, thank you so much for joining tonight and um, cheerio everybody and happy coaching